How do I perform trabectome? How does the handpiece and the trabectome system work? What are the steps of the procedure and surgical pearls? Want to know what you need to know about the trabectome procedure? That's what we're about to cover in this third video in the MIGS University trabectome series. Interested in gaining some MIGS success secrets on surgical steps, patient selection, and post-operative management? Stay tuned to the end to get access to a free ebook. Hello, and welcome to the iGlaucoma YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Constance Okeke, creator of MIGS University. Today, I am super excited to share with you the third video of the new eye glaucoma series on trabectome with our focus on the surgical how-to of trabectome. I've performed over 3,000 trabectome cases over the last decade and wrote a book called The Building Blocks of Trabectome Surgery. So I'm ready to share with you some surgical steps and great pearls. So with that being said, let's dive in. First up, how does one perform trabectome surgery? Well, you need to get comfortable with the foundational steps of angle surgery by being able to get a great view of the angle anatomy with agonia prism. Check out the link below or the card above for one of my previous videos that goes over intraoperative gonioscopy. Now, let's talk about the surgical steps. First, using the 1.8 slit blade in the trabectome pack, a clear corneal incision should be made temporally. Second, Anesthetic should be inserted into the anterior chamber. I use sugarcane for this. Next, it's important to get comfortable with the trabectome system. The handpiece, the foot pedal, and the electrical fluidic base system. The handpiece has a cap that is twisted off by the surgeon, careful not to damage the handpiece tip. Next, the black ball on the foot pedal which should be set up in a comfortable position for easy access, should be depressed to activate continuous irrigation. Next, introduce the handpiece tip into the anterior chamber through the clear corneal temporal incision that was made, and then pass it across the pupil nasally. Then you would place the gonio prism on the surface of the eye after copious viscoelastic is placed on the cornea to gain an excellent angle view. The next step is to use the sharp tip of the handpiece to pierce through the trabecular meshwork to enter into Schlem's canal. Then you will depress the foot, place, foot pedal down to activate ablation. At the same time, you take the handpiece and you advance the tip within Schlem's canal following the natural arc in one direction for as long as feasible. Then, one would disengage and ablate in the opposite direction. The arc of ablation should total about three to five clock hours, and then you're done. If you love what you're seeing so far, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or comment saying, love it. Now, what about some surgical pearls? One pearl is that if you choose to do a combined trabectome and cataract surgery, it is best to do the trabectome first. The fluidic system works best to help main the anterior chamber when the 1.8 millimeter corneal incision is used. If a 2.2 millimeter or greater corneal wound is made first for the cataract surgery and the trabectome handpiece is used in this larger size corneal incision, there will not be a good seal around the handpiece and fluid will leak out causing a shallow chamber, corneal folds, reflux of heme when the TM is penetrated, and a poor view. This makes the surgery much, much more difficult. Also, another pearl or warning is to make sure not to use viscoelastic in the anterior chamber for the trabectome surgery. Some may consider using this to keep the chamber maintained. However, the ablation energy works best with saline solution and the viscoelastic can have a negative impact on its effect. Another pearl is that resistance or significant movement of the eye in the direction of the trabecular meshwork ablation may indicate incorrect positioning and that the tip is inserted into the scleral wall. If this occurs, stop, remove the tip from the canal and reposition and restart as often as needed to get a very smooth advancement and ablation of tissue. 
There should be nearly no resistance of the trabeculum tip as it safely removes the strip of the trabecular meshwork. Have any of you watching have access to trabectome at your facility? If so, click one for yes and click two for no. If your answer was yes, and if you're not using the trabectome, you should consider dusting it off. Okay, did you stick with me the whole way? Awesome. And if you want to know what you need to know about when to best use the device in which patients, stay tuned for the last video in the Trabectome series of Meigs University. Check out the links below or card to get access to the first and second videos on the what, where, and why of Trabectome. If you are interested in learning more about Trabectome or MIGS in general, and if you're interested in improving outcomes and enhancing your approaches to patient selection, I invite you to check out my book, The Building Blocks of Trabectome Surgery, which is packed with my pearls, personal notes, steps to avoid, and action points to ease you into adopting a new MIGS procedure. Many of the benefits in the book can be transferred across various MIGS procedures, so I encourage you to check it out and see the links below for more information and special discounts in the description box. Thanks for watching iGlaucoma YouTube channel, a place where glaucoma innovation is made easy for eye care professionals. Hey, so about that free gift, click on the link below in the description area for a free MIG Success Secrets ebook. MIG Success Secrets can help professionals in the eye familiarize themselves with MIGS procedures and devices. This ebook includes case studies, personal notes, and pearls of common errors and good practice. It will help you advocate for your glaucoma patients, so click on the link to get access right now. Thanks again!